Hello, my friends. Uh, today, I kind of want to share something uh, that I've spoken about over the last couple of videos, um, but it's been through different videos and different things, so it, it'd be much easier to recognize it whenever I speak just solely upon it. Um, and I speak many of the times that I speak or, or I send a message on here, it's because of the things that I see happening in the world that not only the world is doing, but that the fallen church is doing. And it's because she doesn't realize that she's fallen, that she continues to do things. So she speaks about an age that is to come when the age has already come to her that she was speaking about for 2000 years. So whenever you look at Matthew 24 and you look at the words of Jesus, and he relates the gospel being spread directly to the end of the age. And he says it here in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. This is saying, here's one time before the spreading of the gospel, and then here's the time after it, after the gospel has been spread. The gospel being spread to the whole world is the sign of the end of that age. And this is the church, you know, you hear them constantly saying, well, we're just out to spread the gospel to the whole world. Uh, we just want to preach the gospel so everybody can get saved. Because they don't recognize what they're saying. They don't recognize that that time of fulfillment already came and passed them by. They're still stuck in it like a donkey. Donkey is a very stubborn animal mule very stubborn animal thus jesus rode into jerusalem on a donkey to show the stubbornness of his people shows who he rides on the back of day in and day and night and trying to show his people what they do and he uses various other people to show them what to do he uses the holy spirit he uses the witness as a world to testify of his people so that his people can see, but his people continuously refuse it. It's been like this since the beginning. Nothing is new under the sun. None of this has changed. No matter what the church tries to say of her own holiness, she has not seen her own works. So you're talking about two different periods of times, a time before the gospel was spread, and then a time after the gospel was spread. One is the end has not yet come. That's before, that's as the gospel is being spread to the world. And the second stage of that is, and the end shall come, meaning after the gospel has already been spread to the world, you're in the times of the end immediately. We know that when Jesus was crucified and resurrected and ascended up into the heavens, judgment was already pronounced on the world from that day forth. John clearly describes that we are already in the end of the days because Antichrist is here and many Antichrists shall come. That's how we know we are already at the end. This is exactly what the church doesn't understand. She doesn't understand that for 2,000 years it's been the end of the age, spreading the good news to the world. But then at the end of that spreading, at the end of that church age, comes another age that she is unaware of because she is still cut off from it because of her own blindness of who she is. And then the end shall come. The gospel, once it's spread to the world, goes into a new age. The ending of that age the ending of sorrows, meaning right at the end of sorrows comes the tribulations next, which is, I believe, the phase that we are currently sitting in, the end of sorrows, waiting for the tribulations to come. And the tribulations cannot come until those who know the Lord are taken up out of the world. The last remaining hedges, the very last of the remnant who has not fallen, is taken out. Once the hedge is gone, then the Lord can do everything else that he spoke of that he would do. But we're talking about two different ages here, not to get sidetracked. In John 3.30, for instance, this is John the Baptist, who represents the works of the church to, in the absence of Jesus, declare to his people Israel what they should do in the world. His purpose was to bring people back to Christ, to the Messiah, to God, even though they didn't know Jesus at the time. It was to bring people back towards God, to open their hearts to accept the Messiah. 
And that was the same exact mission that the church was given by spreading the gospel. The only way that a man's heart can be open to the works of God is if they have heard the gospel. And then the heart will begin to open up to that, that good news. And then the heart can begin to be transformed. But John is the same as the church. He was given a duty to spread the message that Jesus, the Messiah, was here and that he was coming and he was sent to bring the people back towards God. But then once the Messiah came, once Jesus was baptized by John, John made the declaration, he must become greater, I must become less. And you can look at this and understand it saying exactly the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew 24. The gospel will be spread into the whole world, and then the end shall come. The church, which has been great, must become less as Jesus again becomes greater. It's one and the same things. It's two different periods of time. The greatness of the church is gone because the church has fallen away. She accomplished her duties and then she fell away. So the church must become less, which is what she has been doing since she fall, fell away. But in the absence of that church, what also have you seen? Thousands and thousands and thousands of people building up their own churches, like such as on YouTube, to proclaim the message of God and the things that they have seen because their churches are not doing it anymore that are in the physical buildings. Why aren't they doing it anymore? Because they've been judged, the same as the Pharisees were judged by God. They're not performing the duty that they were meant to perform. When the gospel was spread to the whole world, they were then to go out from those buildings and make the declaration, Jesus is coming back, he is returning, prepare, make straight paths for the Lord just like John the Baptist did once Jesus entered into ministry. But what did the church do at the end of her church age after the gospel was spread to the whole world? She sat there still in her buildings made of precious stones and, and, and idols and everything else that she builds those buildings out of. She still sat there in those buildings as people left the congregation because she's no longer feeding them anything. They can already get the gospel at their fingertips. She's no longer feeding them anything. She's no longer standing for the very principles that she speaks of. She speaks everything in hypocrisy. Thus, by that falling away, by her staying put, she loses members rather than gains members. And that allows the yeast, which is the Romans 1 judgments, those of a reprobate mind, to come into the church themselves and contaminate all of the rest of the batch. And that has clearly happened. The great falling away has happened. And then what you had, whenever the internet came into bloom, for instance, when the gospel would reach the entire world, when the Christian nations all did their duties and, and made all these Bibles to spread to the four corners of the earth, when everybody was able to receive that word and that work was complete, you then, by the falling away, grew up a separate entity church entirely altogether that's everybody that you see speaking on these platforms such as youtube we have a message that we we spread out to the world we know that jesus is coming and we warn about the things that he gives us to warn about but not everybody is speaking of the same voice who speaks that message because the same yeast that infiltrated the physical churches have also infiltrated these kinds of churches which are only churches by word Thus, whenever you look at these YouTube channels and these great pastors and teachers that they'll tell you about, they make sure that their hair is done all beautifully. They make sure that they have no blemishes on their face. They show their beautiful houses and they, they joke around and, and they talk about the grace of God and, and this and that. And they advertise on their videos and they point you toward buying and selling gold for your monetary future. They do all of these things because they too have fallen by the same yeast that infiltrated the very doors of the buildings that were set up. Thus you have an entire falling away, which brings about the very end of that age, the very ending of sorrows, once all things have fallen away, but a very short remnant, a very few. And Jesus even spoke of this also in, in Revelation. There are those for a while who will appear to be sincere, 
But in times of trouble, they fall away because they really were not sincere the whole time. They used these kinds of ministries almost like a business and then truly did grow it into a business. So very few people that you actually hear speak out there claiming to know God by this point at the ending of sorrows knows anything about him because they haven't followed the voice of God who is here in ministry. Once the gospel was spread to the whole world, once that church age ended, then it became a period where the church should have went into active ministry again, just like it did at Pentecost, but it didn't. So John the Baptist fell asleep whenever it became the church. But John the Baptist didn't fall asleep, but the church has. Thus the watchmen have fallen asleep, so I can make that comparison to show you how one did not fall asleep, but one has. But there is still John the Baptist out there in the world who do know God and who are speaking these things of God still, but it's a very, very, very small remnant. And you can only know this remnant by the things that they say because the things that they say are different and they do things that are different than all the other ones out there who are doing the same things. You don't look at somebody who is speaking of God and see the world in their YouTube channel, for instance. You don't see um, the same things that you'll see on a gaming channel or a beauty channel. You won't see those things on somebody that actually knows God because John the Baptist, what did he come wearing? came wearing rags and eating locusts and honey. We don't care about things that are of physical appearance. We're not trying to appeal to Romans 1. We're trying at that point in time to appeal to those who already know God in some manner and call them back to God to know him. Because understand that when Jesus came on the earth and came into ministry, understand that when everything has ever happened that was a major event of God, by the time that there is that major event, God's people have already fallen so far from him that they have no idea how far they've actually fallen. They believe the entire time that they're doing the things that he wants and they know him and they know the things he wants and they know what he's doing and they're stuck in that circular pit, the same as a reprobate mind is in Romans 1, only it's God's version of that reprobate mind. They're so far from him they don't know it, but they won't listen to anyone who actually confronts them or tells them that they don't know him because it goes against everything that they've been taught that was wrong from the first place. Meaning that it's just like the rich man in the parable. They have all these connections and things in the world that they cannot give away um, to go after the kingdom of heaven once the kingdom of heaven has come nigh. And just to show you this, when did mainstream internet, uh, or when did the internet become mainstream? Most people, when you ask this question to, will say sometime um, 1999 to 2005, obviously in different countries, uh, it came later, other countries it came earlier, but somewhere around that same exact time, the 2000 year period that you would expect the gospel to be firmly preached to the whole world and that church age to come to an end, right there, right around the year 2000, when everything started to change completely from what the 80s and 90s were. There's that little period, that small period there, like it was a retirement period where things were joyful. And then immediately it began to turn towards sorrows. Everyone that I've ever spoken to that has seen what has happened over the last 20 years will tell you these same things. We've all been witness to this change. And it all happened right around the year 2000, right when the gospel was spread in its entirety to the whole world and anyone could then view it. So this is just to kind of clear up some of the things I've put in those other videos about why this age is not the same age of the church that the fallen church tells you about and that why this age is actually a new age that they have not been made aware of because they're still stuck doing the same old things that God has long tired from. God bless.